In this video, we're going to talk about all things sleep and the connection to fat loss. Bad sleep equals no weight loss and a host of other health issues. Surgery is just one tool. It's time to put the other tools in the toolbox because it's your body, your health, your life. The average person spends 26 years of their life sleeping. Did you hear me? 26 years of their life is spent sleeping. It's time to wake up about your sleep because I'm telling you, sleep is more important than any diet or exercise. If you really want to burn fat, you need to learn how to sleep better. Has your sleep changed after having bariatric surgery? I know it did for me. Actually, I needed like sleep therapy. It was affecting my weight loss and, and so many other things. I needed help and I needed it quick. I couldn't stay asleep. I couldn't get asleep and I couldn't stay asleep. And it was becoming a big issue. And it was amazing what I learned and how it is connected to our weight loss. So if you stay tuned in this video, we're gonna talk about what sleep deprivation can do, as well as tips and tricks and strategies on how to have a better sleep so that you can be assured that you're doing everything you can do to continue and have a positive weight loss surgery journey. So some of the information I'm gonna share with you today in this video is from my own sleep therapy program that I went through, but also from a gentleman called Ben Azadi from Keto Camp. He doesn't know I exist, but he does great work. Go check him out, he's on YouTube, he has a podcast, he's written some books even on sleep. So I will leave a link in the description box below. If you wanna check him out, I encourage you. He does great things over there. But I just wanted to let you know that this information is, I'm not a sleep therapist, um, I just know from my own experience, my own sleep therapy program that I went through, and then as well as what Ben does over at Keto Camp. So why do we need to care about the quality of sleep that we're having? Just basically, if we're having poor quality of sleep or interrupted sleep, it actually weakens our immune system. It just makes you feel bad. It impairs your judgment. It reduces eventually your ability to cope as well as it, it can cause you to gain weight and prevents you from weight loss. These are just to highlight a few and we'll get into some of the other ones coming up. The thing is when we are sleeping our fat burning hormones get activated and this usually happens during stage four delta sleep. If you prioritize your sleep your weight loss surgery efforts and results will improve. And the best thing is, it's free. So before we move on, ask yourself, are you a person that just doesn't prioritize your sleep? Do you make jokes about, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead? Or you white knuckle through it days of not having really good sleep? Or you tell yourself, oh, I'll catch up on the weekend. I'll catch up on some hours of sleep later on. So as I mentioned, for me, I had a problem both staying asleep and even just getting asleep. And so I needed to turn to a sleep therapy rehab program. So I want to share some of those tips with you now. But let's talk about first what sleep deprivation can do to you. Sleep deprivation is a chronic condition in our world right now. And I think a lot of people underrate it and don't really understand the importance it has and how it impacts our long term health. and and as we were talking about here today, our weight loss efforts. Even one night of bad sleep can cause brain fog. It can impair your cognitive abilities. It has been shown in research to actually accelerate tumor growth. It decreases your problem solving skills. It actually mimics you being pre-diabetic or actually diabetic. So losing weight just becomes more and more difficult and actually making you more and more hungry if you let it go on. Sleep, quality of sleep is when your body takes the time to renew and repair itself. The body and the brain repairs and restores. That's why if you think about it, you're fasted when you're sleeping, meaning everything, you're not eating, you're not doing things, you're slowing down. So it allows your brain and body to actually restore, repair and renew. There's no digestion going on. 
all your body functions are slowing way down. And did you actually know, I'm not going to get into the technical terms, but did you actually know during quality sleep, your brain actually gets flushed? It actually flushes itself. It renews itself every night. If we have sleep deprivation, actually the brain builds up waste toxins, which impacts our thinking and our processing. So lack of sleep increases our stress, which increases our anxiety, and for some of us, even depression. With sleep deprivation, you're actually aging yourself faster. It will impair your physical performance. And it also, stress also increases our cellular inflammation, which makes us hold on to water and hold on to weight. That's what the body does. When it feels like it has an injury or an illness or some kind of inflammation, it holds on to water and holds on to weight. It's a survival technique. It can lead to cardiac metabolic consequences like disease, like heart disease, like metabolic syndrome. This is just to mention a few, but did you hear me say your actual brain renews itself? It washes itself every night. Before we move on to tips and strategies on how to increase your quality of sleep so that you can burn more fat. Let me know in the comment below, what are, how long do you sleep for? What are, how many hours do you sleep? Do you sleep all the way through or do you wake up multiple times? And just for my own curiosity, do you dream? Do you actually dream while you sleep or do you remember your dreams? Let me know in the comment below. So here's some tips and strategies. Some of these things you might be using, some of these things you maybe have never thought before, but these are all some things and strategies to try uh, so that you can set yourself up for success and have quality sleep. So just to understand, don't miss out on the following. There is such a thing as peak hours that where your hormones, your fat burning hormones are working at its maximum. And that's from the hours, depending on the region of where you live, but typically between the range of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. It's called your money time sleep window. During that time frame, it actually is doubling the quality of sleep that you're having. Our brain is regenerating. It's making new brain cells. It's renewing itself. The body is releasing waste products and toxins. The brain is actually housekeeping and cleaning itself out. So remember, it's not about getting the quantity of sleep, the hours of sleep, it's about getting the quality of sleep. And if you can maximize that money time sleep window between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., it will only serve you better. So what time are you going to bed? Are you maximizing those hours? Commit to using your bedroom only for intimacy and sleeping, nothing else. Your body, your brain needs to understand that your bedroom is only used for these two things and nothing else. How many of us use it for an office? How many of us use it as storage space? How many of us use it as an exercise room? Try to commit your bedroom to only intimacy and sleeping only. The optimal range, temperature range, is anywhere between 60 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This is optimal the optimal coldness, it helps to decrease the core body temperature, which in turn makes you sleepy. Below and above this range can lead to restlessness. Make it as dark as possible. Unplug devices, unplug everything that glows, cover the windows. Light exposure suppresses the production of melatonin, which helps to regulate sleep cycles. Stop all devices, the blue light, and any other stimulating activities at least an hour before bedtime. Make something called banana tea. It helps to naturally calm your body. It's like a natural soothing tea. What you do is you take a whole banana, organic if possible, you cut off the ends, you boil it, you don't peel it, you boil it, and then for two to three minutes, and then you discard the banana and drink the liquid, the tea. It's the peel that releases the magnesium potassium that we need to have really good quality sleep. Implement a proper routine, a bedtime routine, which includes slowing yourself down, turning off all your devices, meditating, listening to calming music, read a book, breathing exercises, all of these things. It just signals your body and your brain that you're ready to sleep. 
Make this a nightly habit. Incorporate a caffeine curfew. Try not to have caffeine after 2 p.m. Caffeine has like what is called the half shelf life, meaning, yeah, you might be one of those people that you think you can have caffeine right till you go to bed, or even you think, oh, I can cut it off, like maybe not right before bed, but sometime in the evening. Half of that caffeine is still being used and regulated in your body. You might think it's not hurting your sleep, but it actually is not giving you the quality sleep that you deserve. Try a sleep mask or earplugs. I have incorporated earplugs. I cannot sleep without earplugs anymore because what it does for me, it cuts out all the noise. So it allows me to get to sleep faster and sooner and stay asleep longer. Try to decrease or not have naps during the day. You want your body to know that at a certain time at night, hopefully before 10 p.m., that you're ready to sleep and that you're saving all that energy and telling your body you're ready to sleep at that time. Try using a weighted blanket. I know I started doing this. It was a little weird at first. You can get multiple amounts of weight. I think mine is a 10 pound. I think you can get a 15 pound, even a 20 pound. And what you do is you put it on top of your bedding um, and it just kind of weights you. It's used in a lot of therapies and it can help to decrease anxiety. It just kind of feels like a big hug. Do not eat at least three hours before you go to bed. You want to be in a fasted state. You don't want your body to be focusing its energy on digestion and other functions. You want it to do what it's intended to do, to slow down its function so that you can have it do its work like renewing, restoring, and repairing. This is going to sound weird, but some people do it, and it actually is a practice. You can Google it. Don't just believe me on the internet but you can try mouth taping. It's exactly what it sounds like. You use a tape, you can even buy a specific kind of tape and you actually tape your mouth and you force to breathe through your nose, not through your mouth. Nasal breathing is far more superior than mouth breathing. And if you need a CPAP machine and you have one, then use it. There's a reason why you've been diagnosed with sleep apnea and if you're not a person that's using it consistently, you really need to. Invest in a quality mattress, bedding, and pillows. This is a place where you really wanna invest. Because here's the thing, get this, the average person spends 26 years sleeping. Did you hear me? 26 years, the average person spends 26 years of that life sleeping. That equates to about 9,500 days or over 200,000 hours. And surprisingly, additionally, another seven years is spent trying to get to sleep. So that's 33 years of our life spent in bed. So why not, if you want to spend money, if you can spend the money, invest the money on the best mattress, the best sheets, the best pillows you can. Try your best to sleep in the best sleeping posture you possibly can. You always want your spine and your body to be in alignment. If you are a person who tosses and turns and you wake up multiple times during the night, try not to let that happen more than 20 minutes at a time. If it gets to be about 20 minutes and you're tossing and turning and you haven't felt back to sleep, get up, get out of bed, remove yourself from the bedroom. Don't do something stimulating read a book, something that's calming. And then once you start feeling sleepy, go back to the bedroom and go try to go back to sleep. What this is doing is it's telling your body and brain again that the bedroom, that this activity is only for sleeping. You don't want to be sitting there tossing and turning over 20 minutes, multiple times at night. Try using white noise, like white noise machines, maybe even a fan. So for some of us, that just helps us kind of lull into kind of feeling a sense of calmness and allows us to fall and drift into sleep. If you are having problems, I know that it helped me. If you really are having serious sleep problems, then try a sleep rehab or a sleep therapy program. Mine was online. So uh, there's ones that you can go to a center, but you can find them. They're out there. And it, it definitely helped me.
be aware of synthetic sleep aids and sleeping pills. Now, a lot of them will tell you it's not addictive, but I'm telling you it is. And even if you don't psychologically recognize it as being addictive, um, your body will think that you need these products to sleep or keep sleeping. And the thing is you want your body naturally to produce whatever it needs to produce so that you can sleep on its own. You don't want to be using a product that forces you to sleep or disrupts what your body naturally is trying to do. Even taking melatonin for a long periods of time, it just stops your body from developing its own natural melatonin. If you think you have sleep apnea or maybe someone around you is telling you uh, you're not sleeping very well at night, you need to get tested. Do not avoid this. Sleep apnea is a very serious situation and has very significant health issues, be it your weight loss, but also in other areas of your life. So don't be afraid to get tested because if you think, oh, well, a CPAP machine, it's better to have quality of sleep so that you can have the best medical situation as possible, as well as, uh, understanding that it is impacting your fat burning and your weight loss effort. So did I miss anything? Is there any tip or trick that you use to help you get to sleep faster or keep you asleep longer? Let me know in the comment box below. Quality of sleep is so important and it needs to be on our priority list if you wanna improve long-term weight loss success and even more importantly, overall good health. I promise you that if you commit to improving your sleep, you're trying these things as much as possible, you will see better results in your overall health and with your weight loss efforts. But it is imperative that you keep these next three promises to yourself if you want long-term weight loss surgery success. Good night and sleep well. Mm -hmm.